the gospel since 1892. Do you think those people needed a missionary? Years ago I started a, a, a ministry in Wamsutter, Wyoming. 40 miles west of Rollins, 60 miles east Rock Springs out in the Red Desert. About a thousand people. No evangelistic ministry there. Hadn't had an evangelistic church since its beginning in over a hundred years. Folks, what I'm trying to say is there are places like that in our own country. Around here, we have churches on every corner, don't we? Yeah. And the saddest part is, people just don't care. You have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter 2, verse 11, if you would please, how to fulfill God's purpose in your life. Well, you probably said, well, I've already found that. Well, that's good. Maybe I can encourage you in it this morning. And if you haven't found it, may you find it quickly. The Lord's going to come. Do you know that? Yeah. He's going to come. Just maybe. Just maybe. In our lifetime. Luke 2.11 sounds like a Christmas verse, doesn't it? Luke 2.11 For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Have you looked closely at that verse? It says a Savior is born. 
That's what it says. How can he be the Savior? When he's just born. He must grow up and he must go to the cross to become a complete Savior, must he not? That's what the Bible teaches us, and yet, though the angel of God announced that the baby Christ was the Savior of the world, he speaks of the crucifixion. He speaks of that e experience, that event outside of Jerusalem some 33 plus years ago or after his birth. The message of God the Father is one of certainty, isn't it? You see, God the Father knew and understood that his will would be carried out, his will would be fulfilled. To the nth degree, there would be no change in it. He knew and understood that when that little child, Jesus, grew up, he would die upon that cross. There would be no question about it. Man could not alter the course. Satan could not alter the course. God had it set in his plan. And nothing was going to change that. That's why I could say there in that verse, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. That's why I could use those words. Such powerful, good words. We think of that baby in the manger and we might ask ourselves, well, how could that baby fulfill God's purpose? We might ask ourselves today, how can I fulfill God's purpose? Have you ever asked yourself that? If you haven't, you need to. How can I fulfill God's purpose in my life? If we haven't asked ourselves that question, then perhaps we're okay. We're just getting up in the morning, going through our day, and going to bed at night, repeating it day after day after day after day. Is that what God expects out of us? Is that what God asks of us? No, it's not. For you see, Christian brother and sister, we have a purpose. A purpose. That's why we're here. That's why we're still here until we fulfill the purpose like Jesus that God the Father has given unto us. How can we fill our purpose unto God? Look, if you will, and we find that we need to live up to His expectations. We need to live up unto His expectations Christ was born to be the Savior he would die on the cross being that Savior but in between those two points there's about 33 plus years have you thought about those years that Jesus lived and walked breathed spoke existed upon this earth Because the Bible says that in those 33 plus years, Jesus never sinned one single time. Can you and I say that? No. We can't. Can't, can't we? Do you ever stop to think of what that meant? Jesus never had an impure thought in his mind. He never desired something that was outside of the Father's will coming out of his heart. He never spoke a word detrimental to somebody else's well-being. He never stole anything. He never lied. He never cheated. He never did anything whatsoever. 
totally committed to his mother and father, humanly speaking, and to his great father in heaven above completely in all of those years, 33 plus years, and he never sinned one single time. Anybody here have a track record like that? No, I don't. How can we fulfill the purposes of God? Jesus lived up to the expectations of God, didn't he? He lived up to the expectations of his heavenly father. He kept the Old Testament law and he did everything that the father wanted him to do in the way the father wanted him to do it. Absolutely. Not one single moment was there ever an impure thought, feeling, spoken word, desire, whatever it might be. Not one single time in all of his life. The Bible says that he was without sin. Oh, I wish I could say that. Don't misunderstand me, but I wish you could say that. But we can't. Though we've been redeemed, though we've been saved, though we have become the children of God, we cannot yet say that. And as long as we live life down here, we're never going to be that pure. We must strive to be like Jesus. What were the expectations that God had for Jesus? Well, if he lived for 33 plus years as he walked upon this earth, as he encountered all kinds of everyday experiences, God expected him to be obedient, didn't he? To be obedient to his word. You know, that's what God expects you and I, isn't it? To be obedient to his word. To pray. To read his word so we know what it has to say to us. To accept his word. It's not enough just to read it. We need to accept it. We need to take it and put it in here. To live it out. To share it. God the Father was expectant of his son to be obedient in everything, and he was. Does he ask any less of you and I? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, we're not Jesus, preacher. No, I'm not either. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't have the right and the authority to expect us to live in obedience. How many Christians are not living in obedience to the Lord today? I don't need to go to church. I don't need to talk right. I don't need to give of my time in my effort, in my possessions. I don't need to talk to anybody. And the saddest part of that is, folks, many, many a Christian who isn't obedient to God, their own children are going to perish in the fires of hell. I've said that over and over. If you knew this church family and went out in every home, I think, Father, folks, you would agree with me. If you don't, something's wrong. Come the Sabbath day, New Testament Sabbath day, first day of the week. Oh, there's so many things. Jesus lived in consistent 
moment by moment, not day by day, but very fine-tuned moment by moment in obedience to the Lord. That's what God expects you and I to do. That's a challenge, isn't it? Well, we could say, well, you know, that's a bigger challenge than I can, I can handle. No, it's not. And even if we can't handle it, we need to strive to try to handle it, don't we? We can't just throw in the towel and say, well, I can't do that and be perfect. No, we can't be perfect, but we can strive to be living up to the expectations and the obedience of the Lord. Jesus went wherever the Father sent him. Sometimes that's not an easy challenge, is it? Did you go any place this week that maybe you were uncomfortable going to talk to somebody about the Lord? He went. He went. That's what he did. He would go wherever the Father had sent him. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. That comes back, doesn't it? That comes back to that expectation of God for you and for me. And the expectation that the Father had for his Son is that we would live, he would live in full compliance to the law. Man, oh man. <laughs> there is so much in this book, isn't there? There's so much in this book. Boy. What a challenge to live according to the commandment of the law. And yet, that's what God expects of me, and that's what God expects of you, and that's what God expects of all people who name his name. That's what he expects of us. To live up. To be in compliance with the law. One day, a, a young man came to Jesus. And he said, what must I do to have eternal life? And Jesus told him what he must do. You know what the young man said? He said, well, I've done all of that. No, he hadn't. No, he hadn't. And Jesus knew that, and Jesus understood that. Because when Jesus said, go sell what you have and come follow me, what did he do? He went away because he, he was in love with his possessions. He was in love with them. If we desire to fulfill God's purposes in our life, then we must strive to live up to his expectations for us. I didn't say that we will master them. I said we must strive to live up to them. That takes intentionality, doesn't it? That takes effort. That takes submission. That takes willingness. That takes yieldedness. God, here am I. Here am I. Secondly, this morning, if we are going to fulfill God's purposes in our life, that we must surrender to His will and His purpose for our life. I've heard of men believing, truly believing, that God had called them into the ministry and they put it off and they put it off and they put it off. calling people to the mission fields and they put it off and they put it off and they put it off. 
we must surrender to his will and to his purpose for our lives. You see, Jesus was born a Savior, wasn't he? And he would die a Savior. But for 33 and, and somewhat many days of his life, 33 years, he had to surrender to the Father's will. He had to say, yes, Father. Yes, God. Okay. Mm hmm Day by day and moment by moment. Surrendering to the Father's will. And in Philippians, the Bible would tell us through the writings of Paul in chapter 2. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Paul pegged it correctly, didn't he? He pegged it correctly. If we are going to fulfill the purposes that God has for us, then we must surrender to God's will. Is that always easy? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. God may ask you and tell you that he wants you over there and you are just so set on staying right here. God may say to you, those people across the street, down the street, in the next community over, they need to hear from you. And oh, I'm so comfortable. I've got an easy chair to sit in, God. I've got westerns to watch. i got football to watch. Boy, it's basketball right now, isn't it? Yeah, basketball right now. Surrendering to God's will. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, didn't he? That's surrendering to God's will. And whether it is a small thing or a large thing, it doesn't matter to God because God had given this, this, this part of understanding of his will to his son there even in that manger to be fulfilled. And he kept it. Because all through those years he was surrendered to his father's will. Maybe it's habits. Maybe it's attitudes. Maybe it's feelings. Maybe it's stubbornness. You know, I don't know. I just know I can speak from my experience. Can you? Are we to surrender to the will of God? Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever it is that God has for us, that is to become our objective in life. Absolutely. And then we need to stay in fellowship. We need to stay in fellowship. Jesus was born to be a Savior. And He is God in the flesh, yes. But as you read about His life, He's constantly praying to the Father. He's constantly listening for the Father's will. Constantly seeking what is the Father's mission for him in the moment. Hmm. Yes. We too need to stay in fellowship with him. 
Jesus said what I hear him say, what I see him do, that's what I do. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I do always those things which please him. Wouldn't it be good if we could say that? <laughs> mm, always please him. It takes staying in fellowship with God. Well, how do we stay in fellowship with God? We're not going to get to sit down and have a cup of coffee and a donut over the table across from him, are we? No. Not in, not in realistic ways like you and I might do that. Stay in fellowship. We must understand who God is, what he is to us. That we are here on a mission. We are to be his servants. We are to be his obedient children. We are to be listening for his call. We are to be listening for his instructions. We are to be seeking his will. We find that over and over in the word, don't we? How to stay in fellowship with him. Sometimes we have to pray for forgiveness, don't we? Sometimes we have to yield our will. Well, hopefully it's not such a big struggle, but sometimes it is, folks. Sometimes it is. Yielding my will for his will. And if I'm out of his will, I cannot be in fellowship with him. I wonder how many people are out of God's will today. Hmm? I wonder. Why? Because they don't care about being in fellowship with him. Because he's not that significant, that important. Because there is not that kind of faith in him. Because there is not that kind of love for him. Because there is not that kind of commitment to him. <coughs> hmm? Surrender. Surrender to his will. Stay in fellowship with him. If we are to fulfill God's purposes in our life, these are three ways to look at it. Sure, we can come to scripture passages that just plain put it right smack on the nose and say, that's what God's saying to you. But as we look at the life of Jesus, He fulfilled the Father's purposes in his life because he was obedient to the expectations of his Father. He lived to fulfill them, to keep them, to honor them. And that's the way for you and I. He surrendered to the Father's will. It wasn't always easy, was it? How about those times when the scribes and the Pharisees came? How about those times when they wanted to stone him? How about those times when they just turned and walked away? How about those times when his own disciples turned and said, <laughs> Jesus said, will you also go away? And how about that time? when he stood before Pilate. The Roman soldiers. And hung there before all the world to see. 
He lived up to the expectations of the Father. He was surrendered to the Father's will. And he lived in fellowship with the Father. There is no greater blessing to him than to do that. And that's what God would have you and I to know, to follow. That's the kind of example that he has established for us. 